Playing with Power MTG. Powerful cards, powerful formats. Before we get into today's video, I wanted to talk to you about our sponsor, Factor. Factor is a meal service that takes the hassle out of meal prep and planning. Factor's no hassle prepared meals are designed by dietitians for maximum nutrition and flavor. Unlike other meal services, Factor cooks your meals ahead of time so it arrives ready to heat and eat within minutes. This helps you avoid all of the prep work and cleanup that comes with traditional cooking. But this isn't just some fast food or TV dinner style service. These meals offer fresh, never frozen ingredients across a variety of preferences. They offer traditional meals as well as keto, calorie smart, vegetarian, and vegan. There are over 25 meal options each week so you'll never get tired of the meals delivered to your door. Personally, the best thing about Factor to me is that it offers convenient nutrition. Nowadays, the only quick options are unhealthy fast food or overprocessed, stale tasting frozen dinners. Factor's meals assure you always have something nutritious and delicious on hand. It saves time for prep, cooking, and cleanup. It gives you the time back to focus on the things that you love to do. So give Factor a try today. Use my link or go to go.factor75.com and use code POGPWPMAR50 for 50% off your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. Thanks to Factor for sponsoring today's video. When you give them a try, you help support us to continue offering you all great content, like tonight's game. So thanks! Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Catherine piloting the partner pair of Rograx, Son of Rogat, and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. This is a turbo ad nauseum list that utilizes Rograx speed and yeets itself into the sun, winning with Thassa's Oracle or Underworld Breach lines. Catherine's opening hand contains a Diabolic Intent, Ride of Flame, Red Elemental Blast, Imperial Seal, Mana Confluence, and her London Mulligans are Spell Pierce and Dress Down. Next, we have Jay, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic Sopus. This deck, known as Blue Farm, seeks to gain advantage through its commanders and win through Underworld Breach or Thassa's Oracle. Jay's opening hand contains a Windfall, Demonic Consultation, Command Tower, Gemstone Caverns, and his three London Mulligans are Tainted Pact, an Offer You Can't Refuse, and a Blood Crypt. After that, we have Daquan, piloting the partner pair of Ikra Shadiki the Serper and Bruce Tarl Borish Herder. This deck seeks to gain life through its commanders for a massive ad nauseum. Daquan's opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Mox Opal, Lion's Eye Diamond, Gamble, Arid Mesa, Undergrowth Stadium, and a Bloodstained Mire. Finally, we have Zack, piloting the partner pair of Timna the Weaver and Krom Ludovic Opus. This is also a blue farm deck, full of good cards that win because it's, well, it's full of good cards. <laughs> Zack's opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Toxide Extortionist, Silence, Plateau, Watery Grave, Command Tower, and a Misty Rainforest. If you like this video, please like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Without further ado, let's kick off this persistent, passionate, pish posh, playful paradise. Catherine was able to do the longest handstand and gets to start us off. But Jay has a pregame action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a windfall. Catherine draws a card for turn and plays a Mana Confluence. She casts her commander, Rograx, son of Rogah. She taps her Mana Confluence to cast an Imperial Seal. She fetches up a card onto the top of her library and loses two life. She passes the turn. At the end of Catherine's turn, Jay casts Demonic Consultation, naming Dranith Magistrate as it resolves. Jay exiles the top six of his library and then the seventh card is Dranith Magistrate. The table curses Jay's luck and the turn moves to Jay. Jay draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Dranith Magistrate. Jay ships the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays an Undergrowth Stadium. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts a Mox Opal. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. He follows it up by casting a Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Bloodstained Mire. He passes the turn. Zack draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts a Mana Vault. He gives the turn to Catherine. Catherine draws and casts a Mana Crypt. She casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Rograk as an additional cost. She fetches up a card into her hand and then passes the turn to Jay. Jay draws and moves straight to combat. He attacks Zack with Dranith. Zack takes it and Jay ships the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He casts a turn two, ad nauseum. In response, Jay casts Miscast. Daquan corrects his Lion's Eye Diamond, discards his hand, paying for Miscast. Then ad nauseum resolves and Daquan reveals a Mox Diamond, Abrupt Decay, Tender Wall, Plateau, Angel's Grace, Underworld Breach, Stomping Ground, Wither Bloom Apprentice, Vampiric Tutor, Reign of Filth, Tainted Pact, Blood Crypt, Polluted Delta, Grand Abolisher, Dark Confidant, Savannah, Sacred Foundry, Viseju Who Shelters All, Simeon Spirit Guide, Exotic Orchard, Scroll Rack, Ancient Tomb, Grim Monolith, Viseju Who Endures, Assassin's Trophy, Jessica's Will, Wheel of Fortune, Scrubland, Sylvan Library, Demonic Tutor, Jeweled Lotus, Chrome Mox, and an Esper Sentinel, deciding to stop there. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Sylvan Library. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding Polluted Delta. He casts a Tender Wall. He sacrifices it, adding two red. 
He exiles Simeon's Spirit Guide from his hand, adding another red. He casts Jessica's Will, targeting Zack, adding six more red. He casts Grim Monolith. He casts a Scroll Rack. He cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He casts Abrupt Decay, targeting Dranith Magistrate. Dranith is destroyed, and Daquan casts Underworld Breach. He escapes Lion's Eye Diamond. He cracks his LED, discards his hand, and adds three black. He escapes Demonic Tutor, fetching up a card into his hand. He escapes Reign of Filth. He escapes LED again. He cracks it, discarding a Chain of Smog, adding three green. He sacrifices a land to add a black through Reign of Filth. He escapes Witherbloom Apprentice. He falls up by escaping Chain of Smog, targeting himself. Witherbloom Apprentice triggers, draining each opponent for one, and Daquan gains one. He demonstrates a loop of copying Chain of Smog, targeting himself, draining opponents through his Witherbloom Apprentice. He does this over and over until the table is dead, and Daquan wins the game. Adnaz proves itself yet again to be a powerful card, and the table decides to go for game two. In this game, Jay brings back Tim of the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus. His opening hand contains a Mana Crypt, Dockside Extortionist, Peer into the Abyss, Pact of Negation, Ottawara Soaring City, Tundra, and a Plateau. Next, we have Daquan, Paladin Kenrith, the Return King. This is a mid-range list that seeks to maximize card efficiency and win through concise win packages. His opening hand contains a Mana Vault, Elvish Spirit Guide, Culling Ritual, Phantasmal Image, Scalding Tarn, Exotic Orchard, and a Windswept Heath. Zack brings back Timon of the Weaver and Krom Ludovic's Opus. His opening hand contains a Jataxian Probe, Ragaman Nimble Pilferer, Simeon Spirit Guide, Tundra, Scalding Tarn, Misty Rainforest, and his London Mulligan is a Godless Shrine. Catherine brings back Rograk, Son of Rogan, and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. Her opening hand contains a Lotus Petal, Necropotence, Pact of Negation, Ad Nauseam, Grim Monolith, Tainted Pact, and a Final Fortune. And Jay gets to start us off. Jay draws and plays a Plateau. He casts a Mana Crypt. He passes. Daquan draws and plays an Exotic Orchard. He casts a Mana Vault. He ships the turn to Zack. Zack draws and pays two life to cast a Taxi and Probe, targeting Catherine. He looks at Catherine's hand and draws a card. He plays a Tundra for turn. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide, adding a red, and casts Ragavan, Nimble Pilferer. He gives the turn to Catherine. Catherine draws and casts a Lotus Petal. She casts her commander, Rograx, son of Rogah. She passes to Jay. During Jay's upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and plays an Ottawara, Soaring City as his land for turn. He gives the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Windswept Teeth. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He exiles over Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a green. He casts Culling Ritual. In response, Zack casts Swan Song. Culling Ritual is countered, Catherine thanks Zack, and Daquan creates a 2-2 bird. Next, Daquan casts a Phantasmal Image. It enters as a copy of Ragavan. Daquan ships the turn. Zack draws and moves the combat. He attacks Jay with Ragavan. Jay takes it, Ragavan triggers, and Jay exiles a Wishclaw Talisman, and then Zack creates a treasure. In his second main phase, Zack casts a Wishclaw Talisman from exile. He passes to Catherine. Catherine draws, takes no game actions, and passes, discarding to hand size. During his upkeep, Jay loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and casts Dockside Extortionist. It enters, and Jay creates three treasures. He casts Ad Nauseam. Without a fight, Ad Nauseam resolves. Jay reveals a Chrome Mox. Enlightened Tutor, Jeweled Lotus, Vampiric Tutor, Scrubland, Marsh Flats, Mental Misstep, Esper Sentinel, Badlands, Brain Freeze, Calling the Weak, Dranith Magistrate, Swords to Plowshares, Simeon Spirit Guide, Underground Sea, Ancient Tomb, Arid Mesa, Dark Ritual, Talisman of Progress, Luxury Suite, Windswept Teeth, Time Twister, Wooded Foothills, Demonic Consultation, Spell Pierce, Savine's Reclamation, Mystical Tutor, Scalding Tarn, Silence, Cabal Ritual, Morphic Pool, and a Felwar Stone, deciding to stop there. He casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Dockside as an additional cost, adding 4 black. He plays an Underground Sea for turn. He casts a Dark Ritual, adding 3 black. He exiles Simeon Spirit Guide from his hand, adding a red. He casts Peer into the Abyss. Peer resolves, Jay draws half of his remaining library and loses half of his life, rounded up. He casts a Mox Diamond, discarding a Tundra. He casts Mox Opal. He casts Chrome Mox, imprinting Time Twister. He casts Thassa's Oracle. In response, Catherine cracks her Lotus Petal for red and then casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting Thassa's Oracle, which was the first blue spell of the turn. In response, Jay casts Pact of Negation, countering Red Elemental Blast. Thassa's Oracle resolves and with a trigger on the stack, Jay casts Demonic Consultation. He names You Are Already Dead and exiles his library. Thassa's Oracle's trigger resolves and Jay wins the game. Well, two quick games in a row, so the team decided for a third. In this game, Jay is piloting Yisan the Wanderer Bard. This is a toolbox deck that seeks to chain tutors through its commander to assemble a combo win. His opening hand contains a Jeweled Lotus, Mana Crypt, Soul Ring, Llanowar Elves, two Forests, and his London Mulligan is a Forest. Daquan brings back Kenrith, the Return King. His opening hand contains a Gamble, Lion's Eye Diamond, Dark Ritual, Volcanic Island, Tropical Island, Scalding Tarn, and a Misty Rainforest. After that, we have Alan, Piloting Rocco, Cabaretti Caterer. This deck uses its commander to cheat out Silver Bullet pieces, using Arena Rector to find Vivian on the hunt, 
and assemble Kiki Combo wins. Alan's opening hand contains the Birds of Paradise, Greater Gargadon, Arcane Signet, Dranith Magistrate, Vernon Catacombs, Taiga, and a Command Tower. Catherine brings back Rograk, Son of Roga, and Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. Her opening hand contains a Pyroblast, Mox Amber, Mana Vault, Mox Opal, Springleaf Drum, Scalding Tarn, and a Gemstone Caverns. And Jay gets to start us off. But Catherine has a pre-game action, putting Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling a Pyroblast. Jay draws and casts a Jeweled Lotus. He sacrifices it to cast his commander, He's on the Wanderer Bard. He plays a Forest for turn. He casts Lana War Elves. He passes. Catherine draws and casts her commander, Rograk, Son of Roga. She casts Mox Amber. She casts a Mana Vault. She casts a Mox Opal. All set up, Catherine ships the turn to Daquan. Daquan draws and plays a Volcanic Island. He casts a Gamble. He fetches up a card into his hand and then randomly discards a Tropical Island. He casts a Lion's Eye Diamond. Daquan passes the turn to Alan. Alan draws and plays a Taiga. He casts a Birds of Paradise. Alan gives the turn to Jay. Jay draws and plays a Forest. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Soul Ring. He passes. At the end of Jay's turn, Catherine casts a Demonic Consultation, naming Thassa's Oracle as it resolves. She exiles cards from the top of her library until she reveals Thassa's Oracle, putting it into her hand. The turn moves to Catherine. Catherine draws and casts a Springleaf Drum. In response, Jay activates Yisan for one, fetching up a Quirion Ranger onto the battlefield. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a Forest to his hand, untapping Yisan. Jay activates Yisan for two. In response, knowing what's coming, Catherine floats a black and a red. Then Jay fetches up a Collector Oof onto the battlefield. Then Springleaf Drum resolves. Catherine casts her commander, Silas Wren, Seeker Adept. Catherine passes the turn. Daquan draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He gives the turn to Alan. Alan draws and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Savannah onto the battlefield. He suspends a Greater Gargadon. Alan ships the turn to Jay. During Jay's upkeep, he loses his Mana Crypt roll and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Forest. He moves to combat and attacks Alan with Collector Oof. Alan takes it, and the turn moves to Catherine. During the draw step, Catherine takes the damage from her Mana Vault. She plays a Scalding Tarn for turn. She cracks it, pays a life, and fetches up a Volcanic Island onto the battlefield. She passes. Daquan draws and plays a Misty Rainforest. He gives the turn to Alan. Alan draws and plays a Command Tower. He casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Duranith Magistrate. He passes. At the end of Alan's turn, Jay activates Yisan for three. He fetches up a Circle of Dreams Druid onto the battlefield. During his upkeep, Jay casts Worldly Tutor. He fetches up a Dosen, the Falling Leaf, onto the top of his library. Also during his upkeep, he wins his Mana Crypt roll. He draws and taps his Circle of Dreams Druid to help cast Dose in the Falling Leaf. In response, Daquan cracks his Scalding Tarn, pays a life, and fetches up a Badlands onto the battlefield. He cracks his Misty Rainforest, pays a life, and fetches up a Bayou onto the battlefield. He casts Dark Ritual. Jay knows what's coming, so in response, Jay activates Quarian Ranger, bouncing a Forest back to his hand, untapping Circle of Dreams Druid. He taps Circle of Dreams Druid to help activate Yisan for four. He fetches up a Thought Not Seer onto the battlefield. Thought Not enters, and Daquan reveals his hand, and then Jay exiles Ad Nauseam from his hand. Then Dark Ritual resolves, adding three black, and then Dosen resolves. Jay casts Natural Order, sacrificing Collector Oof as an additional cost. He fetches up a Teamer Sabertooth onto the battlefield. He plays a Forest for turn. He activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Quirion Ranger back to his hand. He casts Quirion Ranger. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a Forest to untap Circle of Dreams Druid. He floats mana through Circle of Dreams Druid, then activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Quirion Ranger back to his hand. He recasts Quirion Ranger. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing a forest, and untapping Yisan. He activates Yisan for five, fetching up an Ashaya, Soul of the Wild, onto the battlefield. Jay activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Quirion Ranger to his hand. He recasts Quirion Ranger. He activates Quirion Ranger, bouncing itself, since it's now a forest through Ashaya, and untaps Circle of Dreams Druid. He presents a loop of floating mana through Druid, and then using Quirion Ranger to untap it by bouncing Quirion Ranger to itself through Ashaya. Using this loop, he adds Infinite Green. He activates Quirion Ranger to untap Yisan. He uses Yisan and Quirion Ranger to verse all the way up to 8 and fetches up a Crater Hoof Behemoth onto the battlefield. He activates Teamer Sabertooth, bouncing Crater Hoof to his hand. He uses his infinite mana to repeatedly cast and bounce Crater Hoof, making his army infinitely large. He uses Quirion Ranger to untap all of his creatures. He moves to combat, attacks each opponent with an infinitely large creature with Trample, and Jay wins the game. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games tonight. Congrats to Daquan and Jay on their wins. In Game 1, an early Dranith Magistrate was looking to pump the brakes on the game, but Daquan's Ad Nauseam decided that that game had a different and much faster outcome in mind. In Game 2, Jay showed off both Ad Nauseam and Peer into the Abyss, and it made for incredible card velocity and an easy way to pull off the win. In Game 3, Jay had an expert knowledge of his deck. He knew exactly what to tutor for at the right times and piloted the deck with precision. That precision is what brought him victory tonight. The most valuable card in tonight's game 
brought to you by luxury playstyle goes to Quarian Ranger. While we understand that Ad Nauseam did a lot of work in the first two games, it was this little elf that brought Jay to victory in Game 3. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.